five. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And if you mean it honestly, I want you to sing it louder than anybody else. And smile big while you're singing it. Amen. All right, let's stand and sing it together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather to their home beyond the shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the skies, the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll called up yonder I'll be there let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. Well, let's see. I think we ought to go and sing over in glory land, about 10 pages to the right. 65. Got it? Just over in the glory land. Amen. 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 I have a home prepared where the saints abide Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land just over in the glory land, out with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land, I am on my way to those mansions fair. Just over in the glory land. There to sing God's praise and His glory share. Just over in the glory land. Sing it with me. Just over in the glory land. I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land. There with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land what a joyful thought that my lord i'll see just over in the glory land and with kindred saved there forever be just over in the glory land just over in the glory land Think about what you're singing on this last one, okay? Are you ready? With the blood washed throne, I will shout and sing just over in the glory land. Let hosannas to Christ the Lord and King just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land there with the mighty host
all God's people said, amen. 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 Remain standing. Turn around, shake hands with somebody you don't know. Don't pick on somebody you know. Go find somebody you don't know. Well, I tell you what, if you've not been here every service, you have missed it. We have had a great time thus far. All right, now you're getting, now you're getting carried away. <laughs> we are. Well, we're glad you're here. Uh, Bobby Vinoy, a good friend of mine, is here. Uh, somebody asked me today how long Bobby Vinoy had been in Kennett Square. I said, I think and since the town was founded. <laughs> Has it been that long, Bob? 40 years. And we talked this morning just briefly about how I appreciate men that have been in the ministry and stayed with the stuff for a long time. He's been in one place 40 years. In two stints, right? 40 years? 48 years. 48 years. Woo. Let me turn this hearing aid up just a little bit. 48 years. Well, I've preached for him. He's preached for me, and now he's going to come. We're both going to get preached to tonight. But, Bobby, why don't you take us to the throne of grace, will you please? Amen. Michael, if you and Gary will come, we're going to take the offering on this next song. Um, I think the, that we're just going to go ahead and sing one, Tim, unless you have something you just want to rip out there. Which way you want to do it? Somebody make a move. Make a decision. here. All right. Number 183, let's stand and sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. That way you can reach your wallet better, too. Amen. Yeah. Those folks can smile. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth, it sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth, oh how I love Jesus, oh how I love Jesus, oh how I love Jesus, because he love me it tells me of a Savior's love who died who set me free it tells me of his precious blood the sinner's perfect i 
dost love me. Okay, now, what we're going to do tonight, a little bit different. We need to, we need to get our hearts warmed up. And uh, so that the singing and the preaching would uh, get down into the root system of our hearts. So we're probably only going to have one preacher. But uh, does anybody here love Jesus? Raise a holy hand and say amen. Amen. Now, okay, now I'm going to ask you why. Somebody give me one word answer why you love Jesus. All right, somebody else. He's faithful. God. He's a savior. He's saved. Anybody else? You think of reason because of his mercy. Anybody else? Because of his love. What else? Grace. That's more than one word, but that's all right. You keep bringing the tomatoes, we'll let you preach one night. <laughs> Not really. Anybody else, you love the Lord. You got a reason why. The cross, amen. All right. Who, who can remember the date when you got saved? Raise your hand, anybody. When you get saved. 1970, who else? Somebody, yes, ma'am. What would she say, 1960? 1966, that's the year my wife and I got saved. End of this month, we'll be celebrating. Mary? Amen, somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Praise God. Anybody been saved longer than that? Van Oy has. He was saved in 1913. Uh, who else? Anybody else? Huh? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me ask you a question. Those of you that are saved, is he still precious to you? Uh, do you love him even more today than you did when you first met him? Isn't he wonderful? Then when we sing... Oh, how I love Jesus. Well, to really be able to sing it from the depths of our soul. Amen. Amen. Where would we be without the Lord and his saving grace and his shed blood? Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Brother Talky. All right, on that third, sing it out with me. It tells me what my Father hath in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, give sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, it tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Sing it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, Amen. Let me ask you to be seated for just a moment. And uh, I want us to turn to number 162. Along that same line, I think, I think it'd be good to do this about now. We're going to sing Down at the Cross. Have you ever been singing a song and, and you accidentally started thinking about what you were singing? You, you've had that happen, huh? All right. And, uh, and, and, and joy bells ringing in your heart. Has that ever happened? No. All right. Well, now, when, when those joy bells start ringing in your heart, what I want you to do is I want you just to, at that point, 
All right, just raise your hand up like that. Put it back now. And if you have trouble with that, ask your neighbor to help you. Put up my right hand. Put up my right hand. Okay? All right. We're going to sing Down at the Cross. And uh, I know you'll, uh, there'll be somewhere. If you say, there'll be somewhere. You can have seconds and thirds, too. But we're not going to slow down too much. All right? Uh, all right. <clears throat> Did I say 162? Yeah, I would. Oh, my. Down at the Cross is what? Number two, I knew that, yeah, right. <clears throat> Number two, glory to his name, all right. Down at the cross. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood. Precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of pride. Glory to his name come to this fountain so rich and sweet cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet plunge in today and be made complete glory to his name everybody now glory to his name glory to his name was the blood applied glory to his name amen hope nobody was looking in the window preaching <laughs> amen. just want you ladies to know when this meeting's over I'm doing a head count <laughs> Amen. Man, I like this. This is had this song on my heart all day, really for a couple of days now, and man, it just goes right in line with it. It's sad when we forget how precious it is that God saved us. We've been saved for a while, and God saved me at a very young age. I thank God for that. But Amen. I don't want to. I don't want it to ever grow old. Amen. Uh, happen sometimes here we go <laughs> oh. the old story will never grow old how jesus died to save my soul oh no the old story will never grow old that story will never grow old i went to church one morning
have passed by since I met the Lord. I remember that night when the story was told. I had no hope. You remember that feeling where you're just hopeless? Just knowing you're on your way to hell with no hope. Praise the Lord. I had no hope. Oh, the message it brings. That story is old, but it still blesses me. Oh, oh no, no, the, the old, old story will never grow old. How Jesus died to save my soul. Oh, no, no the, the old story will never grow old. That story will never grow old. That story will never grow old. Amen. Yes, sir. Um, well, I just want to say I got saved July 7th, 2011. I was um, an adult. I had three children. And I just remember the night that I got saved. We were at teen camp, <laughs> teen camp, taking our kids to teen camp. And um, I was sitting in the back row. And I remember the Sunday before um, we went to camp, the preacher said that he was going to be preaching on hypocrites in the church. And I'd known for a long time that I wasn't saved. I made a profession of faith when I was a little kid, and I, it wasn't real. I knew that I wasn't saved when I got married. I knew I wasn't saved when we went into the ministry. And um, But the Lord kept working on my heart, and he gave me another chance, praise the Lord. But I remember sitting back in the back of the tabernacle um, <laughs> while my grandpa was preaching, of course. And he was preaching on things you can't take back. And the last night he preached on you can't take back the opportunities opportunities you've had to get saved. Yeah. And um, about 15 minutes into the, um, the sermon, I realized that I was weeping. I'd been holding it in for a long time. Yeah. I just didn't want to get, I didn't want to be embarrassed. I didn't want other people to think I was a fake, even though I was. Yeah. And so finally, I should have just got up and ran there. But <laughs> I waited till the end of the service and... I ran to the um, the altar to my husband and said, I've got to get saved. And I'm so thankful that he didn't um, say, well, I thought you were or anything else. He just said, let's get it taken care of. So I got it taken care of that night, and I've never been the same since. I just want to thank him for another chance, another opportunity to get saved before it was too late. So thankful. I just, I, I never became a drunk and an alcoholic and all that stuff. And uh, you know how it is. Sometimes that, that makes you feel a little bit like, wow, you're not as special and all that kind of stuff. And uh, But the thing is, still a child of God, still needed the same saving grace, yeah. uh, Brother Pilkey. And, uh, but I got to thinking about that one day. It almost overwhelmed me. That I've got to live almost my whole life with the Holy Spirit of God inside of me. And the Lord Jesus by my side the whole time. A lot of different things happened here and there. And uh, I'm just so thankful God gave me that opportunity to, to know him at a young age and to get saved at a young age and be able to have him the whole time. I should be a lot closer to him than I am because of that. But thank God he did that. And I'm uh, just glad to be saved and pardoned for my sins. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sing something else. Can you sing that? As Jesus sat down one day to eat, a woman came and bowed at his feet with tear-filled eyes. She seemed so all alone, with no peace in her heart. Yeah. 
was found and I was born again. Amen. Uh, you, don't have, you don't have to sing that song when, uh, when Mercy walked in. Uh, the, the courtroom scene. Yes, sir, I do. Yes, sir. You sing that? Yes, sir. Would you, would you mind singing yeah. that? Stay here. You know the great thing about salvation when the Lord offers it, He doesn't ask you how much you've done wrong. He just says, "Here it is. You need it." <laughs> Amen. So thank God, it's all that's gone. All of it's gone since I've been saved. Praise the Lord. He took care. I stood here in the courtroom. The judge turned my way. It looks like you're guilty. Now what do you say? I spoke up. Your honor, I have no defense, and that's when mercy walked in. Mercy walked in and pleaded my case, called to the stand, God saving grace, the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in I stood there and wondered how could this be that someone so guilty had just been set free my chains were broken I felt one again the moment mercy walked in mercy walked in and pleaded my case called to the stand God saving grace the blood was presented that covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in the blood was presented it covered my sin forgiven when mercy walked in prejudiced or biased or anything, but uh, I really could just listen to them all night. <laughs> Tell you, it's a thrilling thing when your kids and your grandkids marry right. You get up on a Sunday morning, you don't have to, you don't have to wonder what they're going to do, where they're going to be. And uh, these kids, I'll tell you, they love God. I've been wanting to, ever since last night, I've been wanting to, I wanted to get, I wanted, wanted to get you, I want to get you to tell me something. How many of you, how many of you have a loved one that you are confident that he or she is in heaven already? Can I see your hands? Amen. Well, I told you last night about my mother, one of our daughters, somebody, somebody who's lost a husband. You, you really don't lose them. You just send them on ahead. Decades ago, I quit saying goodbye to a departed loved one. I just started saying good night. We'll see you in the morning. Amen. Because resurrection day is coming. Amen. And uh, who, who, who's, who's got a loved one that you, you want to tell us about that's passed on? Maybe. A, uh, yes. Wow. Wow. 
she's born again. Amen. That's good. Who else got a loved one in heaven? Yes, ma'am. Is that right? How long have they been there? Is that right, really? Wow. Uh, who else has a loved one in heaven? Yes, ma'am. Your parents? Uh, amen. We're going somewhere with this. Who else? Yes, ma'am. How old? Is that right? We lost two of our keep saying lost. We've sent two. We sent one, our, our only son, from my, my wife's womb straight to heaven. So we'll see him on the other side. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. How old? Hmm. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Huh. Back there in the back. Amen. You'll throw your arms around him one of these days, son. Amen. Well, I tell you, it sure makes that song when we all get to heaven. I know that when our daughter, when our daughter uh, passed, the um, I don't suppose you sing this when heaven's sounding sweeter all the time. Do you sing that? But I'm going to tell you, when you start, when you start uh, saying good night to them, and some of us folk who've been around since World War One, we probably got more friends and acquaintances on the other side than we have here. But one day, one day, we're going to meet on heaven's shore, and we're never going to be separated again. Amen. Listen, if you can sing that, would you sing that and then? And then we'll have our preacher to come, unless the pastor's got something else. You got me blubbering. You want me to say something? No. <laughs> Just sit there and blubber. I'll sit here and blubber with you. Oh, the heaven is real. Yeah. We're going to have somebody preach on heaven this week. Turn removed. Okay. Oh, excuse me, Dave. This is a great song. Life has been so good I can't complain When I'm down God gives me strength to rise again But I get weary from the struggle of it all so I listen, how I listen for his call. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Seems like lately it's always on my mind. Time. It's hard 
to lose a loved one to the grave. But we have this blessed hope that Jesus gave. He's going to wipe every teardrop from our eyes. When we meet him in that land beyond the skies. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Seems like lately it's always on my mind. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heaven's sounding sweeter all the time. Someday I'll leave this world behind. Heaven's sounding sweeter all the time. You know, we cry in this church. And we don't apologize for it. I was sitting there thinking about empty seats in this church. And I got to thinking about the one that sat there, and the one that sat there, and the one that sat back there, and especially the one that sat here. And boy, I miss them. But heaven is greatly coming quickly, and it's getting sweeter all the time. I have a lot of family in heaven, but let me tell you something. That empty pew over there, and that one back there, and that one over there, and I counted one time, I think I buried 11 husbands from the women of our church. It's sweet. And these are not tears of sadness. These are tears of joy. Rejoicing that when I see my Savior, Joe Houston's going to meet me, and he's going to say, Brother Gary, you can't believe what they've got up here. Come, let me show you what's over here. Let's go down this road. Let me show you that. And look over there. We tend to think about that departure and how sad it is. I'm going to preach a funeral tomorrow. Brother Glenn asked me what I was going to preach on. I said, Bible. But there's a verse we need to remember. Psalm 116, 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We're going there. They wouldn't come back if they could, but we're going there, and I can't wait. I tell folks all the time, if the Lord's taking a busload up tonight, I'm volunteering. I'm ready to go. What's worth this world when I have that world to go to? Heaven. Sound is sweeter all the time. God bless you guys for that song. Wow. If that didn't bless your heart, you need to get your blesser fixed. That's all there is to it. Yeah, well, maybe you don't have one. <laughs> Come to the cross and get one, amen. amen. Yeah. See, you Baptists, you think you're the only ones going to heaven. Oh, no. No, we worried about half our crowd. Yeah. <laughs> but as long as you're going, might as well go first class. Yeah. Well, in 1973... I met for the first time Dr. Glenn Bradbury. He wasn't a doctor then. He's just a nurse. So, so we got these doctorates. I've got two. That makes me a paradox. My brother Bradbury is a preaching machine. And uh, we've stood together, helped each other for all these, that's 42 years, bud. It's a long time. How come, how come you don't look older? <laughs> Still, he looks as young as the day I met him, but he's, he's uh, got a great wife. She's backslidden. I wanted her to sing the song. What is it? Ain't it great? Four, four days late. Yeah, when he's four days late, he's right on time. And she does it 
she does a job and a half, but uh, she's she's got a sore throat, and uh, so anyway. But uh, he passed her up <laughs> just west of Vineland, New Jersey, and uh, if if any of you get the bug on these kinds of meetings this week, he has a tent meeting the last week of June up there, and it's not that far away. But uh, it's a, it's just a flat, right, good meeting, and it gets on. Wonderful things happen. So, <laughs> Brother Bradbury, you come preach. You, are, are you wired? Yes. Okay. He has such a soft voice that we have to give him extra amplification to reach the back of this. Reach the back of this. I love you, Doc. Amen. Thank you, brother. This pulpit's a little too big for me. Do you have a stool? Okay, well, we'll get this thing down out of the way. No, it's all right. That's all right. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm all right. It's a little, a little uncomfortable. I've had this affliction my whole life. <laughs> I, I'm uh, vertically challenged. It's such such an honor uh, to be here tonight already. The, the singing, I sure appreciate you guys. Appreciate the testimonies. And appreciate this, this wonderful church. I was impressed when we drove up this afternoon and we looked at the building. And then to hear the story of how this church came about and how the pastor came here and... Uh, it's exciting. And then to see this group of people, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm already blessed. And uh, I'm so happy to be here this evening. They were talking about uh, loved ones that have gone on to heaven. Now, the preacher here, he can weep and talk at the same time. But I start crying. I can't talk. My dad died about this time in, in 50, 15 years ago, 2000, I had to preach his funeral. And my mother died three years ago at about the same time. My mother was 95 when she died. And uh, I had to say goodnight to both of them. We're going to see them both again. Amen. Amen. My, my mother read the Bible through at least 40 times, probably more than 40 times. That had an impact on me. We don't realize, many of us, that our heritage and what we picked up along the way that was great and that was good from our parents. My father broke down and cried one day when he was visiting us at Christmas time. And uh, he said his mother and my grandmother had prayed that one of her boys would be a preacher. My dad went to Bible college back when Gordon College was a good college in Boston, Massachusetts. He had problems with his eye when he was there, and he went blind. And so he left college and went up to Aroostook County in Maine and picked potatoes. And uh, never got back to college, and none of his brothers were preachers, and he was not a preacher. None of the children, grandchildren, that I know of became preachers. And... Uh, to think that the mantle had fallen on me. I'm telling you, this is the honest truth. The most uh, unlikely individual in the Bradbury family to be a preacher was me. And yet God put his hand on me and called me to preach. So I'm telling you, it, this, we're going to be doing, we're going to be spending a long time in heaven thanking some of our loved ones that have gone on before us. We may think we're something sometimes when we accomplish a little something. 
We don't realize where that came from sometimes. Uh, someone asked me if I had my Bible tonight. I said, I didn't only got my Bible. I got my song book with me too. That, uh, that adds something to it. I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalm, please, 103. Camp meeting is a little different, you know. Jubilee is a little different. Don't expect it to be like normal church services. We're not here for a normal church. In fact, I'm hoping that the, uh, in the future, all the church services here will not be normal. Yeah. But just, uh, just a level above it all. Yeah. That you folks will all week long be anxious to get to church. When Wednesday comes around, you say, hey, we get to go to church tonight. I remember as a kid, I said, oh, man, I have to go to church tonight. <laughs> you won't say that anymore. And then, then the, the next days were Thursday and Friday. And by, by Saturday, you're going to get antsy. Sunday, I wish you would get here. I wish you would get here. I want to get to the house of God. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we really felt that way? How is it that we don't? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction who crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now I'm waiting for that last part. You know what? I looked in the mirror this morning, and I said, to my, I said who is that? I'm waiting for that youth to be renewed like an eagle's. Would you pray with me? Father, we ask your blessing upon the message tonight. Thank you for this good church and this pastor. And thank you, Lord, for these meetings this week. Lord, we all need help. We all struggle, Lord, with sin and temptation, lust of the flesh, the enemy, the devil, the world that we're around. How God all just seems to rub off on us. And God, sometimes we just feel so filthy and dirty. Oh, God, we need your help. Yes. Help us tonight. Each one, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I, I have a question for you tonight. Why did you come to church? Why did you come to this service tonight? Well, you may say someone asked me. And I wanted to uh, support the meetings. I might come up with all kinds of uh, reasons. Did you come to the service tonight for yourself? Did you come to the service tonight for the church? Did you come to the service tonight for the Lord? And if we'd all be truthful with ourselves tonight, we'd probably all agree, maybe the last reason I came to church is for the Lord. Sure, we come to church to get something, don't we? We come to get something, for God to do something in our life. But we also need to come to the services to give something. Sure, we give a friendly handshake, and sure, we may pray for people as we see them, and we try to be a blessing to people. But what do we, have we come to give something to God? How many of you folks have a prayer list? Let's see your hand. Praise God. How many of you have a praise list? You know, the first two, besides my wife, that I've seen never raise their hand for that. A praise list. We, the saved, enjoy more the blessings of the Lord, enjoy more of his goodness, enjoy more of his grace, enjoy more of his glory, enjoy more of his greatness 
than anyone else on this planet. Certainly, we owe God something for all that he's done for us and all the needs that he meets that we don't even know about. I tell you, the, your pastor tonight, he sure is praising the Lord because when I was following him, he pulled off the side of the road and thought there was only one car in back of him. And then he pulled out, there was a second car. And God's holy angels put his, their hand on his car and prevent him from running into that other car. Hey, man! Amen. Things that happen. I just think of, about coming over here today, driving 52 miles. How many times I could have gotten in a wreck and I could have got seriously injured and be suffering in a hospital bed tonight. But it has not happened because we have a great God. Amen. How often do we thank him? for that. Aren't we under some obligation to God? Yeah. Aren't we under some mandate of God to praise Him? Yeah. Hundreds of places in the Bible we're given reasons to praise the Lord. We're given reasons to rejoice. We're given reasons to lift our hands and thank God. And praise him for what he's done. Would you look at a couple of verses with me before we go on? Psalm 107. You can look at verse 8 or verse 15 or verse 21 or verse 31. It doesn't matter. Psalm 107 verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. You look at verse 15, it's the same one. You look at verse 21, it's the same one. You look at verse 31, it's the same verse. Now, God doesn't stutter. I mean, if he's going to give us the same verse four times in the same chapter of the Bible, it's got to be pretty important to him. All oh, that men would praise the Lord. When is the last time you had a praise fit? I mean, you just couldn't help yourself. Yeah. I was in a service years ago, must have been 1968, 69, up in Wiscasset, Maine. And a famous preacher was preaching at the Woolwich Wiscasset Baptist Church by the name of Harold Seitler. And he was preaching a message from Genesis, believe it or not, chapter 2. He got about, and there wasn't too much happening, though that was quite a wild church. There wasn't too much happening. He got about 20 minutes into his message, and a man directly in front of me, I was sitting over here on the far left side, and uh, sitting back about four pews, the man in the third pew suddenly, I mean, there was nothing special that Harold Seitler said that I remember. He jumped up and said, Glory to God! 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 And then he sat back down. And Harold Seitler got so tickled, it took him 20 minutes to stop laughing. He went, he started, he called it holy laughter. I'd never seen anything like it. He went all the way to the one end, and it was a wide church. One end of the platform laughing, raising his hand, shouting, glory to God. Whoo, hallelujah, glory to God. 20 minutes long. I'd never seen anything like that. I said, where am I? Anyway, I thought I had a, I wanted to go outside and look up at the sign, see if it was a Baptist church. I didn't know that stuff happened in Baptist churches. I'd gone to the First Baptist Church in Portland. And when you go, went upstairs to go into the auditorium, there was a sign right there by each of the doors that you would go into them. And it said, it, it said on the sign, uh, uh, no talking beyond these doors. It says, if you talk, whisper. And if you whisper, whisper a prayer. And that's the kind of dead services I grew up in. Yeah. 
And to see this happening, I'm telling you, it did something to me. And I thought to myself, man, I like it. Yeah. In our church, First Baptist Church of Portland, we, we had a, 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 I used to call her an old lady. She probably wasn't any older than what I am now. <laughs> we called her old lady Hanson. Sat right down here in the second pew. We had the uh, middle aisle in our church in Portland, just like this, and then two sides. Sat in the second room. And our, our morning services at First Baptist Church was on the radio, WCSH. I think that's what it was. And, uh, and this lady was a former missionary, I guess to China or something, or India. I don't know what it was. And... Uh, the Pastor McElhinney, oh man, he was a great preacher. He'd get preaching and she'd say, Amen! <laughs> and every woman would look at her and, and, and you know, make a bad face at her. She didn't pay any attention to all that. Another minute would go by and she'd say, Amen! <laughs> she'd, get, she'd get excited, raise her hand, Amen! Nobody else in the church? No, oh, you never said nothing. And so the deacons got together. We got to meet with Mrs. Hanson. It's disturbing the radio broadcast. <laughs> this is the truth. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm telling you the truth. And they met with that precious old lady, a former missionary. Said, well, you're always a missionary. She's still a missionary. And they said, listen, we're on the radio, and we hear things said that people are disturbed because you're, 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 you're interrupting the service with your amens. Would you please stop saying Amen. She never made a comment, I guess, because the next Sunday morning, she got, got excited again. Amen! <laughs> she just kept on going till the day she died. It was amen. And what a horrible day when she died because all the amen stopped after that. Yeah. I don't want to be a part of church. I want to be a part of a church that, that what we're reading about here in this passage. Would, would you look a little further to Psalm 111? Psalm 111, what's it say? Let's see the first verse. It says, Oh, praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my in the what's that? What's that? Isn't that the Old Testament word that means church? In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Let me ask you, when's the last time you praised the Lord with your whole heart? In the house of God. When's the last time? Isn't this scripture? Isn't this the Bible? Isn't God telling us this, this is what we should be doing? Yeah. Well, I, I don't, I, I'm not built that way. I'm not made that way. My mind's not made. I mean, my thinking's not. I mean, my, my character, that's not, that's just not me. Then you need to change a little. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is God's word. Yeah. Aren't we obligated Oh, maybe you didn't get saved as much as I did, huh? <laughs> and when you got saved, you didn't get as much as I got, huh? If I understand it right, when we got saved, we got the Holy Spirit, all of us. And we all of us got just the same amount of the Holy Spirit, and that was all of Him. And I'm telling you, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit of praise. Amen. The Bible says... Oh, maybe it's, well, maybe it's another verse. I think it's another verse. How about 113? Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye. How many servants of the Lord do we have here tonight? How many servants of the Lord? It says, oh, praise his what? Is that a command? Yeah. Is that God telling us the servants of the Lord should be praising him? I think it is. Uh, verse 2, it says, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Let's see if there's another one. How about 117 in verse 1? Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. Uh, I, how about, uh, let's see, are, are, you, are we included in that when it says all people? There's another, there's another command. I, look, how about Psalm 135? I know you don't want me to go on. Come on, you say, quit preaching. Quit this. Come here. I, we've, seen it, we've seen enough already. I just, just quit, quit doing it. I mean, this is too much. It's overbearing. But how about Psalm 135? Praise ye the Lord. 
Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. How about Psalm 146? <clears throat> Psalm 146. Psalm 147. Psalm 148. Yeah. Psalm 149. Psalm 150. Yeah. Guess how many times in those five brief chapters God says, Praise the Lord! Yes. 44 times. Why does he have to tell us to do the same thing so much, so often, and I haven't read one-fifth or one-tenth of the verses for time's sake? Praise ye the Lord. Now let's see if we can do it tonight. Just lift your hands up and say, praise the Lord. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it all together, all right? One, two, three. Praise the Lord. Hey, if we could do that just a little bit, louder and a little bit longer, maybe God, we can just maybe get his attention. Because the Bible says that the Lord dwelleth in the praise. He dwelleth in the praise of his people. Yes. God help us. Help us to learn something about praise the Lord. Now let me see. Uh, Psalm 100. I heard that Psalm 100 has already been preached. Did anybody catch anything out of Psalm 100? When, was this preached yesterday, brother? Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Let me see. Make a... Hallelujah, we get to go to church. It's Monday night. woo <laughs> Is that a joyful noise? That's what we ought to be doing. Make a joyful noise. This is what God's word. I'm not making this up. If, if I was making it up, I'd be embarrassed already. I'm not making up. It's right there in the Bible. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. It says, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. And it says, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture, and enter into his gates with complaining and mourning and discouragement and depression and woe. I'm having such a tough time. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. And if you haven't found out yet that the Lord is good, you're not saved. Yeah, that's right. We have found he is good. He is great. He is glorious. And he's gracious. That's our God. If that's not something worthy to praise, then we're missing the boat then somewhere. It says in Jeremiah chapter 31, I'm, I'm sorry, Jeremiah chapter 33. We're familiar with that, aren't we? We're familiar with verse 3. I ask you, are you familiar with verse 11? Jeremiah 33, 11. It says, bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Anybody bring that tonight? Anybody bring the sacrifice of praise? Hey, that's a sacrifice. It's not costing us much to make that sacrifice. I mean, we can make it with our mouth, can't we? Yeah. Oh, preacher, you don't realize it's going to cost me a little embarrassment if I says praise the Lord. <laughs> Man, I was over in Germany. I got excited about the message I heard over there, and I said, praise the Lord! Woo! Man, that's great! Preach it, brother! Amen! They threw me out of the church. I was just trying to encourage, I'm telling you the truth, he threw me out. I was just trying to encourage the preacher, just trying to encourage the people. Hey, this is something worth praising God about. I got thrown out. I don't think the preacher or the deacon's going to throw me out tonight. That seems like we're having some exciting time here in the Lord. And we ought to. I mean, I was praising the Lord when they were singing. Did you hear me? I wanted to be heard. I wanted them to be encouraged, but most of all, I wanted to give God the glory and praise for this great salvation that we have. Man, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. You say, oh, that's Old Testament back there, that Jeremiah 33, 11, but Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, it says the sacrifice of praise. 
that we have a responsibility to offer the sacrifice of praise. We're here tonight to give God praise. We're here tonight to give Him glory. And the purpose of a jubilee meeting is to get out of our starchiness and get out of our old kind fashion thinking and recognize, hey, if God's going to get praise, it's got to come from His people. Amen. You're going to let the Pentecostals do all the praising? I'm not going to. No. Hallelujah. Mm. Too much we're occupied with ourselves. Yes, sir. Too much we're occupied with worldly interest, the routines of life. And you get around the world and our jobs and the pressures and the stress, we, get, we all get discouraged. Things go wrong. We get stressed. But we got to remember, life is not about me. Yes. Because life is about Jesus. And in the midst of all this discouragement, all this stress, all these problems, he needs to get the glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's about the Lord. On Sundays, I, we get reoriented. Sunday is like going to the doctor's. And the doctor gives you a shot of an adrenaline or something. Huh? Yeah. Whatever's ailing you, he, he's supposed to. It used to be that way. They always had something to give you that, you mean, you go out of the office really stepping it. Today, they send you to a specialist. And then the specialist says, you need surgery. And then he says, we'll, we'll, we'll set up for such and such a day. Come on in. We'll, we'll cut you open. I mean, before we're not, man, they, they have taken every penny. That, oh, I better not get on that. I better not get on that. In days of old, they had some kind of tonic they could give you. And that tonic would wake you up a little bit, shake you up a little bit. That's what it's like when you go to church on Sunday. It's like going to the hospital. And there you find help. Amen. As a man, we went and visited. had an open heart surgery. Well, it was sort of orthoscopic. Man, he showed me. I never seen anything like it. Had a big old scar. Guess I'm on the wrong side. A scar here and a scar here. And they, they went in there with a camera and went in there. And, and they were going to repair his valve. He had one of those valves where the blood was going back in and wasn't shutting. The old flapper, you know. So they're getting his flapper fixed. And boy, they got in there and found that there's nothing they can do to fix that valve. So they went out and killed the calf, the fatted calf. Took his valve and stuck the calf's valve into that fella. Now he's half animal. <laughs> <laughs> and, but after, after they sewed him up and everything, they put him in an induced coma and had that stuff down his throat and everything and breathing for him and all the rest. I mean, he had a tough time. And there was two days in there. They didn't think. They didn't think they were going to be able to keep him. They, th they thought they were going to lose him. Jerry Cardell. We'd been by Jerry's house about ten times. Knocking at the door. Only his wife would come. Go get your husband. He won't come out. Jerry! I'd yell from outside. Jerry wouldn't come. Jerry, I need to talk to you! Jerry wouldn't come out. You ever had a guy like that? Yeah. They run from you. Yep. They hide. Yep. Jerry was a hider. Each week we'd go back. One week my, my son went and caught him before he'd get in <laughs> And talk with him, and Jerry found out that he, that he wasn't this religious nut that he needed to run from. And told him about the surgery. So my son and I, we went in to visit him, Lady of Lord's Hospital in Camden. And uh, they had just pulled the tubes out of him. He had just come out of the coma. I says, Jerry, you ready yet? I think he thought I meant, are you ready to die? <laughs> no, I said, are you ready to get saved? Can I take this Bible and show you from the Bible what you need to do to be saved? He, says, he shook his head. And I went through the plan of salvation, explained what he needed to do. He there on his bed, nearly deathbed then, prayed and asked Jesus to come into his heart. He went home from the hospital on uh, the next Saturday, and so, what was it, Mary? Last Monday? When did we go? Oh, Saturday we went and visited him. He went home from the hospital on Wednesday, and so this past Saturday we went to visit him, and there's Jerry. I mean, he's transformed. 
I said, Jerry, when are you getting out of the, the, uh, the rehab center? He says, I, I, I hope to get out by Friday. I says, where are you going to be Sunday? I'm going to be in church, preacher. <laughs> and he says, not only that, I'm getting my brother to come too. And not only that, I got two or three friends I'm going to get to come to church. In fact, I'm going to get most of this mobile home park to come to church. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, we went out of that nursing home excited. Now, I don't know if he's going to keep that promise that he made, but I'll guarantee you he'll be in church where he can get all those others to come with him. And I'm on, I just want you to know, he was excited, excited. Amen. How about you? You excited about your Christian life? Psalm 107. Would you turn over there? Now, I don't know how much time I got. That clock up there, it only says quarter after eight. And I heard that I'm the only preacher tonight. (laughs) I'll be done. I'll be done in a few minutes. I I know you folks need to get home. Psalm 107. There's four... Verses that are the same that we looked at. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Well, what for? What for are we praising the Lord? First, I want you to notice in verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And first, I want you to see tonight that we need to praise him for redemption. In order for us to be redeemed, he had to give us His love. He gave us his love. You read in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, God said to Moses, I've looked down upon my people, and I see the condition and the affliction of my people, and I'm going to save them. I'm going to deliver them out of Egypt. Why, God? Them Jews have only caused you trouble the entire time they've existed. I mean, from Abraham down, they have caused you trouble. They have caused you heartache. They have turned their back. They are stiff-necked people. And God says, I haven't loved you because you're many. I haven't loved you because you're better. I have loved you because I've decided to love you. And God didn't love you or me because we were better than anyone else. No! He loved us. And he loved Israel. Israel was in trouble. Israel was in bondage. Israel was enslaved. Israel was abused. And in Egypt, Israel had no home. They had no hope. They were in a strange and foreign land. They had no help. They had no hero. But God saw and God sent a man. God sent a hero into Egypt. I want you to know we too were in slavery. We too had a strong, strange, Horrible master. We too had an enemy of our soul. We too had Satan against us. And not only did we have the devil, our own flesh, creating more trouble than the devil could ever cause. We were in bondage and we were powerless to break free. And Jesus said this in John chapter 8 and verse 30, 34 where he was talking to those Pharisees and he told them, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. Because they had told Jesus, we've never been in bondage to anyone. Oh, Jesus said, oh no. I mean, anybody turn there in, in John chapter 8? In verse 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant. There's some folks here tonight. You're not saved. And you're a servant to sin. You're a slave to sin. 
You're a slave to your flesh. Oh, I don't do anything bad. Yeah. You could better have another thought coming. I haven't sinned. You better look in the Bible. The Bible says the whole world is guilty before God. But maybe there's some Christians here tonight too. There's an area in your life where you're still a servant to sin. <clears throat> still enslaved with sin. Maybe it's bitterness. Maybe it's gossip. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's wrath. I mean, it could be all sorts of things. But you're still a servant of sin. Listen, Jesus went to Calvary's cross and shed his blood that he might deliver us from that sinful master and he might deliver us from sin and we might experience being made free. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall what? No, that's not in the Bible. That's not a Bible truth. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You easily can be set free and if you're only set free, you can be back in bondage. But if you're made free, you are a free man forever from that point on. And that's what redemption's about. Redemption means he's made me free. Amen. That's something to praise the Lord about. That's something to be thankful about. Amen. Jesus looked down and God saw. And he, God sent a hero from heaven. And he took our sins. And he died on Calvary's cross and was buried. And he, 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 he arose from the dead. And we placed our faith in him. And we were pardoned from our sin, as we heard our brother say. But we're more than pardoned from our sins. Our sins are gone. Where are they gone? That's why I brought the hymn book. Because the hymn book can say it better than I can. It says this. You ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say, my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary. As far removed as darkness is from dawn In the sea of God's forgetfulness That's good enough for me Praise God, my sins are gone Hey, can't you praise Him for that? Hey, it's not just pardon I mean when the devil says so and so did such and such Jesus is going to come defend us and say What sins are you talking about? Your sins are gone if you're saved. Your sins are gone. They're buried in the depths of the sea. They're carried as far as the east is from the west. They're cast behind God's back, never to be remembered again. If you can't praise God for that, there's something wrong in your life. God help us. We're redeemed. Our sins are gone. It's a crime not to be filled with joy. 1 Peter 1.8 says that we have, as Christians, we have what? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Come on, Christian. Get the joy bells ringing in your life. Start thinking about serious things and serious things are spiritual things. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17, this light affliction, which is but for a moment, is not worthy to be compared with the glory that should be revealed in us. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, because the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's our problem. We've got our eyes on this life, this world. We got our eyes on our financial problems. We got our eyes on the physical problems. We got our eyes on things that discourage us. No wonder we as Christians don't have joy. Get your eyes on the Lord. Praise Him tonight. What time did I start? I don't know. Okay, good. <laughs> he said he doesn't know. Are we all right? Amen. Are we all right? I mean, I know this fellow here. He's excited, man. I, I could preach to him all night, man. I get some shouting out. We get going on here, won't we? Amen. <laughs> hey, would you look at the next one in verse? Uh, in verse 15, it says in our, in our passage, Psalm, oh, i got to get back there, Psalm 107. I hate to leave it because it takes time to get back there. Anybody using their Bibles tonight? I don't hear any pages at all. They, they must have all the Bible on their, on their cell phone, huh? 
They got to memorize. They got all right. Memorize. <laughs> Verse fifteen says, "Oh, that men would praise the Lord." Uh, what are we praising the Lord about in this second section? We're praising the Lord because of verse 10. It says, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. I mean, there's some, all of us, there was a day we all were sitting in darkness. Yes. But praise God, one day light appeared to us. Yeah. As Jesus, when he went through Naphtali and Zebulun, they said, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. This is the revelation. I mean, the redemption. Why should we praise God? For redemption. Why should we praise God? Because of the revelation of God's person. Amen. You didn't know there was two revelations, did you? Did you, know, you didn't know Jesus was two revelations? He was a revelation of God's person, and he was a revelation of God's word. Amen. It says in, in John chapter 1, verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What did we behold? What did they behold when Jesus came? They beheld Glory. No man, verse 18, has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath what? He's declared Him. Jesus not only declared Him by His words, He declared Him by His being, who and what He was. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, what misery to dwell in darkness. What misery to dwell in deception. And that's where we all were. What misery to be in dishonesty, defeat, distress, and death. But one day Jesus passed by. And one day we saw the light of the glory of God. I mean, praise God. And we saw his demeanor, his being, his appearance, his actions. I mean, we saw his miracles, his defense against the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests. We saw his humility. We saw him laying his life down. We saw his resurrection. I mean, even the centurion says, Behold, surely this man was the Son of God. Why? Because Jesus revealed the person of God. And then thirdly, the next one says in verse 20 of our passage, it says, uh, 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 verse 20, uh, 21, it says, Of that man, oh, that men would praise the Lord. But in verse 20, it says, He sent His word and healed them. And so Jesus also was the revelation of God's word, He was the light of the word. I mean, we need to praise God because of His love. We need to praise God because of His, uh, his life. We need to praise God because of His light. And the light is this precious book. When's the last time we said, thank you, Lord, for this precious book? Amen. Let me tell you something. This is the only thing you got from heaven right here. Amen. Oh, I know we say I got the Holy Spirit, but this is something we can handle. This has come directly from heaven. Amen. Don't let anyone tell you this has mistakes. Don't let anyone tell you it has contradictions. They dare to say that, hand them your Bible and say, show me one. Yeah. Oh, I don't believe the Bible. People have told me. I said, well, have you read it? Well, I've read it here and there. You mean you tell me you have not read the whole Bible? No, I've not had read. The, how can you say you don't believe something you don't even know what's in it? Right. This book is perfect. It's the pure word of God. It's been tried in a furnace of earth seven times. Amen. And it's from heaven. It says Psalm 119 verse 89. The word of God says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. I mean, this is something from heaven. That God's given to us, and it's the revelation of God. I'm telling you, we ought to be excited about it. We ought to praise God for it. We ought to be thankful for what God's done. Psalm 119, verse 72 says that this word is of more treasure. It's better than thousands of gold and silver. It says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, we're, not, we're born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by what? The word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Every one of us here tonight, we're saved because of this book. Yes. We're born again because yes. of this book. I mean, every one of us receive light because of this book. Each day we can sit down and we can see spiritual light. We can see spiritual things we could never see otherwise. God has chosen to reveal them, to, uh, to unveil them to us. 
eye hath not seen, nor ear hath heard, neither hath it entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for us, he, uh, they that love, he that loves us. And he has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. We ought to thank God for the revelation. We ought to thank God for the revelation of his, of his word, the revelation of his being, and for redemption. One last point, I'll be done. We need to start praising God for regeneration. Look at verse 28 in Psalm 107. It says, Then they cry unto the Lord and in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He cried unto the Lord in his trouble. We were like men lost at sea. We were like men lost in a horrible pit and miry clay. We were in darkness and in despair and death. But he came in light. He came in his love. He came with his life. And he brought us up out of the horrible pit and out of the miry clay. And he set us upon a rock. And he established our feet upon that rock. And he's put a new song in our mouth. Even praise unto our God. Would you picture yourself having fallen and hurt yourself in a pit of miry clay. You're filthy. You're sinking down in that pit. And some voice you hear at the top and says, hey, do you want some help? You don't know who it is. You can't see clearly. Do you want some help? Yes, help save me. And he lets down that rope. He says, tie this rope around underneath your arms. And I will pull you out. I'll pull you out of your despair. I'll pull you out of your distress. I'll pull you out of your darkness. I'll pull you out of your death. And that's exactly what Jesus did for me when I was 18 years old, 1965, in April. I realized I was a lost sinner and I was as bad as anybody else. And up to that point, I had thought I was as good as anybody. But you know what? You're not as good as anybody. You're as bad as anybody. And praise God, I saw Jesus on Calvary's cross and Jesus I didn't have a vision. I just imagined in my, and it was like Jesus was, was waving his hand, come, yeah. come. And I had my back to him, and I said, no, I'm, I just want to live my life. I want to go my way. I want to do what I want to do. But when I looked and saw the eyes of Jesus, Pastor McElhenney he must have drawn the picture for me. I saw the eyes of love. Yes. And I couldn't resist them anymore. Knelt and accepted Christ as Savior. And I found out there's more reasons than I can give tonight why, why we should praise the Lord. Have you praised Him tonight? Have you given God anything of yourself tonight? Have you rejoiced in His salvation? Have you thanked God for what He's done? Would you do it if you haven't? Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what else can we say? I wish I had three or four hours. I wish our minds, our hearts, our wills could deal with, with that much time in the Word of God. I wish I was a better preacher as Paul preached past midnight. Preached into the morning light. Wish those days could come back. We could be in the house of God all night, all day. Lord, help us now. Surely our hearts need to be changed. God, we need an education about this business of praise. There's some people here need to be saved. There's some people need to get right with God. But most of us, Lord, we need to praise you tonight. We need to get right in this matter of praise. We need to make a praise list and begin to add things we need to thank God for and praise God for. Lord, would you help us to take this seriously? We need to praise God for this church. We need to praise God for its pastor. We need to praise God for the people of this church that treat us in love and care. God, help us. Help us tonight. With heads bowed, eyes closed. Is there someone here tonight that could reach your hands, their hands and say, Preacher, I need to praise God more. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up and put it down. Would you pray for me? Come on, come on, let's join us. I need to praise God more. Father, now you've seen their hands. God bless them, help them, remind them of this commitment. Maybe there's someone here tonight say, Preacher, I'm not sure if I die tonight, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure if I'm saved. Would you pray for me that I'd be saved? Anyone like that, just slip your hand up. God spoke to my heart. I need to be saved. Would you pray for me? Heavenly Father, now we ask your blessing as we close. 
Meet the needs of each one. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Preach, you want to come and give the invitation, brother? Let's stand together with heads bowed and eyes closed. We're going to let Ken play softly. Listen, you may think you're here by accident. Tonight we've got a lot of visitors in our room. Nothing happens in God's economy by accident. We're here on purpose. And every testimony we've heard, and every song that's been sung has been special, sent from God for somebody. What's it say to you tonight? Ken begins to play. You may need to step out from where you're at. Folks, this is the first full day of our Jubilee, and my heart's been stirred. Um, Rev, I think we'll just do something for God. Amen. And Tim, I think we'll just praise the Lord, be thankful, and sing. And Brother Pelkey, I think we'll just look for more grace all along the way. And Brother Glenn, I think we ought to just praise the Lord. Uh, there's that old charismatic song running through my mind right now. Let's just praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. What can I tell you? We have so much to be grateful for. Tomorrow morning starts it all over again. Breakfast at 8.30. And our ladies have gone to a lot of extra trouble to make meals. So we want you to be here for them. Uh, tomorrow's breakfast, I think, is uh, pancakes and sausage and all good kind of stuff. It'll be good. You won't want to miss it. I don't know what we're having for lunch. We'll keep that a secret. 
right now we're going to go next door if you'd like. And if you're hungry, we have a little uh, light food over there, homemade soups. I think some of it's cream of potato. Mm -mm, that's good. My, my favorite, cream of potato and cream of broccoli, my favorite soups. So we're going to go next door, and I hope you get t uh, time to. Goose. Wonderful. Wonderful goose. Goose? Goose. You ever been around the Amish? Goose. She's speaking in tongues. Is that what we blow it ourselves to? Now, now you're speaking in tongues. All right, let's have a word of prayer, and we're going to bless the food on this side because some of us will be fellowshipping and getting to know one another over here, and, and those of you who go over, you go right on in and, and make yourself to home, and uh, as soon as they've got it on the table and ready to eat, they'll let you start through the line. Let's pray. Father, again, our hearts are stirred tonight with the truth of your word, how blessed we are. From the singing, the testimonies, just the remembrances of, of folks we're looking forward to meeting again in heaven, and all of it, the preaching about praising God. God, may it seep down into our souls that we could just praise your name. Lord, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to being in heaven where folks will praise you for eternity. We, we're so, so slack on that here. We can't seem to get a testimony from anybody. It's like pulling teeth. And yet, Lord... When we get there, our memories will be perfect about all that you've done for us. May we practice on this side. Bless the food and the fellowship to follow. We'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.